Yo guys, Boomer here, and welcome back to part two of 2v2 Momentum and Positioning. Um, if you guys did not see the first video, make sure you guys watch that one first, so you know which comment I'm responding to. But yeah, this is going to be part two of that video, so we're just going to continue where we left off. Enjoy, guys. Okay, so I have found a replay, and uh, the replay was named Things to be Doing. So I, I remember that I saved this replay... Uh, for a video just like this one. So there was a day on stream where Ungi and I were not playing very well together. So I wanted to figure out if I was the problem that day, right? Um, I don't know if I was playing weird or if I was playing inconsistent or something like that. So I went to solo queue a few games. Uh, so this is how you guys can watch me play around a solo queue teammate. So we'll take a look. See what we got cooking here. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> so, already off the rip. You can see that I soft cheat, because usually when I solo queue, I am never sure how my teammate's kickoff is going to look. Um, I do want to make a kickoff tutorial at some point, just because I seem to get people who just cannot kick off with their life of them. So, <laughs> this, is, this actually ends up being a very good kickoff for my teammate. I try to play it to the sidewall for myself, but I just flip a, a little bit too early. I do end up getting the boost. So now you can see this situation in front of us, right? I know I got the boost, so Jupy is most likely going to go back for the big boost. And Anthony ate pizza is doing whatever this is. <laughs> so I immediately get the ball off of him. You can see Jupy doesn't go for the back boost. He stays within the play. And he's making sure he goes to pick up the spilled ball and try to play damage control. Now, the only issue with him trying to play damage control is he did not touch the ball away from me right so he, he he really needs the boost here so he's trying but the issue is is this in 2v2 should be switched and again i use the term switch uh, a lot um and that's because you should play to the open space and not play into the opponent you see what happens when you see so if he grabbed the boost and he drove up this side of the wall and hits it across his net you can see my team is not close enough to get it and then he's then giving ant eight pizza a free ball and a free boost but instead he tries to play up the same side where i'm at and this allows me to dunk him uh, and what that happens is it forces the problem early and now you can see ant eight pizza does not have enough time to react so this is what i was saying he he did the correct thing of keeping his momentum across his goal line but it's still a, a difficult shot and, and if, if he wasn't there like a if he was there a second later i probably would have gotten a bump on him as well so um, I kind of forced him to jump, otherwise he would have drove into the, into my car. So if my teammate shoots this low or shoots this top right, um, it's a goal regardless. And he ended up shooting it like a little bit into the middle and it's still a goal. Just because of how quick we played that. So the mistake here is that Jupy didn't switch the field, he played into the opponent. Um, and that's another issue that I see a lot of uh, lower grand champs struggle with, is they don't know when to play to the space um especially on on plays like that it's a very solid kickoff from us hook kickoff right there we'll see what happens you can see as soon as i as soon as i see my teammate is overcommitted, and we do not have a play forward i notice they have a counterattack opportunity this is another situation where you should be switching the play the reason being is you want to present the problem as early as possible on a counterattack. Right? So when you have the man advantage, he makes this a lot easier for me because he slow dribbles it at me. Right? So as soon as I see him lose control of the ball, I'm just going to go get in front of it and give my teammate time to recover. It looks like a really stupid shell, but it ends up spilling to my teammate as well. He just didn't stay in the play. This is this is another big issue. So, But the best way they could have played this is Ant slots the ball this way, which then drags me out of position right and then there's there's the threat of a shot right because if the ball is like played into this space then they have another option he could pass back to ante or he could go for a solo play or he could just shoot it right give me a problem as early as possible but instead this ends up happening and then instead of my teammate staying within the play he's flipping so you can see this is where flipping becomes an issue because now he's backed himself down to the goal line and this is what i was talking about in the other video 
now I'm not in a position where I can help him. I should be chasing Jupy. But that, that can also make it confusing in your defensive third. So if you were to split the field up into threes, right? This is our defensive third where this blue line is. So chasing in this position, if it's not a guaranteed demo, if I'm behind this player, it's just going to be confusing for my teammate. Um, and you can see that could have very easily been a goal for them because he didn't stay. So this is where, uh, oh, he's ball cam off as well. This is one of the positions where I feel like he needs to get information first because he has no idea what's going on in the play and then he turns the ball cam on and the interaction is happening. And then he's already flipped. So this is where like moment carrying the wrong momentum in the wrong spot can be a detriment to you. If I was if I was in his position, I would just not flip and I would look first, right? Because if he's not flipping here, let's just say he's still driving this way and he grabs this penny, right? Now he can be turning for this and he has a dust. Can you see the difference right here? So if he's just coming off this penny, all he has to do is boost a little bit and double jump and it's a goal. <laughs> I feel like a lot of players don't look for these tiny, tiny situations where you can just beat somebody because this touch ends up baiting Jupy in from the complete other side of the field. Right? Because he wants to be involved in the play. He got the boost and now he wants to be involved, right? So he's drifting. And now he has he's cut himself off from the information. So if my teammate were to, you know, boost a lot, like boost and make his turn quicker, he could definitely just dust this. And Jupy would never, never see him because he's not paying attention. Uh, but instead we end up getting this <laughs> so could have definitely been a goal for them so you can see i'm immediately going to play damage control right after see my teammate and i'm making sure i get multiple touches i am not just coming in and banging this ball away the reason i get multiple touches is because i don't want to give ant uh a free ball <clears throat> excuse me i apologize about my voice there you go this doesn't look this doesn't look complicated at all. And this was like a 1700 lobby at the start of the season, so like if we did that the play earlier, it would have been a goal quicker <laughs> rather than, you know, letting the opponents get a shot off on us. All right, very solid kickoff again. And this is another type of flip manipulation. So, if you guys want like what I'm actually doing, I am pushing like this kind of and I'm making sure I'm pushing my stick up and into the ball while it's flipping because it's a physics based game right so i am making sure i stay in front of the ball and then i'm using my tiny bit of boost to still stay in front of it which obviously you can see my teammate hard cheats and completely bumps me into the ball but ant is not gonna 52 cars in this position especially from a cheating position uh, and you can see that it hard it absolutely hard wins the the 50 50 for us we just end up missing the goal though unfortunately so this is another i am uh i'm caught off guard right because in this position i'm i'm hoping my team is gonna just leave it for me so i can finish it because i got the boost but i'm like too distracted and it is baiting me in right because i want to know if it's going to bounce out and i can shoot it um and you can see as soon as I realize it's not bouncing, I've already made the mistake of not going wide. So I should be going wide out this way to make sure I can dodge a demo, but instead I'm staying very slow momentum in the play. And this makes me an easy target, right? Now they're on a counter attack. Fortunately, our teammate gets a demo and you can see he's, he's playing it slow again on the defense, which I guess in this situation is fine if he's he's trying to buy time for me but he already bought time but you can definitely see if jupy wanted to shoot this he he 100 percent could have uh a, a higher level player is not gonna slow play this uh it's just when you have a shot opportunity i don't know why people don't take it it's like a low 1600 low 1700 want to play like a waiting game instead when you should just be you know up the child like this like make the decision fast the quicker you make decisions, the less confusing you're going to be to your solo queue teammate. I will tell you that is one tip that has really helped me in the past. Uh, because for the longest time, I would slow play. 
I was a I was a player who would who would play very slow. I'm like, okay, well if I play very slow, I should be like obvious to my teammate that I still want the ball or that I'm still on the ball. But you just end up making the game harder for you and your teammate. Uh, the quicker you make decisions, the less confusion there is, and the more time you give your teammate to make decisions, right? So even in this spot, instead of like waiting for this interaction, I go force it immediately. So now my teammate knows I'm slow momentum, he can take it. Right? Just get the ball moving. It, it works a lot better now. I can see my teammates overcommitted, so I'm not chowing yet. As soon as he goes behind me, then I know it's a chow, right? So I'm just, I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Now he's behind me, now I can go. Punish the lack of control there. I was kind of hoping Jupy would hit it into me. I'm trying to preemptively predict his touch here. Because I know most players are going to cut this because they're afraid of the pass in field. Um, so if I was just a little bit more patient, I could have played his touch, but that's fine. I immediately get behind my teammate so that he can chow safely. And this is very interesting because Jupy ends up leaving his teammate completely alone. This is interesting decision making for me because he just jumps for this. And then he knows that there's a threat there. There's an immediate threat on his net, like point blank, and he goes for the boost. Uh, which is very confusing to me. So, a good punish there. I'd, I'd like to see his POV and see why he's... I mean, he doesn't even need boost in this situation. This ball is hit so slow. All he has to do is go back up the wall and play the backboard and just touch it across so that I can't shoot it. But, I mean, he just completely left. I don't know if that's like a lapse of focus or what, but that is very bad to leave the ball there. This is also a cheat that I do a lot when I play with solo queues because you cannot communicate with your solo queue if the other team is going to go for a Spanish. So this type of cheat for me is always safer, just in case the other team does do a Spanish. Uh, I don't immediately die. I have an opportunity to grab boost, and I have an opportunity to dodge the Spanish and save the ball. Uh, and this is the reason I do this cheat. And it's, it's even more of a plus uh, if my teammate actually wins the ball this way. As you can see, I'm already getting my feet set. I go grab boost, and I am right in front of the, the play. Like, no confusion. I know my teammate's going behind me. They have no control in this play. They have no flick. Not the best touch from me. I wish my teammate would play this quick. Beautiful. Now I follow him up, right? That's, that's like working together to get the ball out on defense. And we get a goal out of it. It's nothing special. It literally is nothing special. This is just me having trust in my teammate. Right, I notice he his you have to pay attention to each other's cars. Right? As soon as he touches this, you can see his recovery is tough. He doesn't have a double. So I'm gonna go follow it up before Ant 8 does. So you can see me just being there. I'm constantly playing this cutoff. So this is where I slow play. Like I have slow momentum because if he does get this touch out, it's gonna beat to the guy behind me. So I wanna block the angle. So this is like something I have an inner clock for. That's why I don't need information for it. Again, this has to this has to be a situation you you have to be put in quite a bit to, to know how to play it correctly. And you can see my my second touch there is annoying as hell to the to this guy because he's obviously looking to cut it, and then all of a sudden I'm gonna like bump him if he doesn't keep driving, and then I left the ball for my teammate in a good spot, right? If you look at my teammate's POV, he's like, oh, I mistouched. Oh, the ball's back in front of me. Like, it's it's very simple. And then he just gets a touch over, and uh ends up getting a detrimental 50, and we end up getting a lucky bump because of it. Easy peasy, put it in the net. Love to see that. So you can see again, I soft cheat just in case. And what I mean by soft cheat, for those of you that don't understand the difference between a hard cheat and a soft cheat. A soft cheat is you either flip and you don't boost, or you boost and you do not flip. That is the difference, at least uh, in my opinion. So I, I boost and flip, obviously, but I'm no longer boosting. I am waiting for the interaction to happen. A hard cheat is literally like just guessing 50-50 which side the ball is going to spill, and then you're just full boosting into the ball no matter what. 
Um, and I see people do that all the time, and all they do is end up hitting their teammate like out of the play, and they both commit, and it's a free net. Like it happens all the time. Beautiful save from my teammate, but unfortunately, so you can see I had a lot of trust in him here. We end up getting the demo, so I'm kind of just hoping he gets the save. Um, which, because it looks like he does, right? It looks very confident that he's gonna have the save here. So all he needs to do is hit it out to me, and then we have a 2v1 against the guy who just got demoed. Um, but it seems like he, he might have hit it just a little too slow here. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if he flip canceled. It doesn't really look like he did, but if he just front flips like a second later, he, he'll end up pinning it underneath Anthony instead of into him. <laughs> Um, and then I definitely could have been there for the save if I uh, if I saw the dunk coming because it ends up hitting the bar. Uh, but unfortunately, I, I put just a little bit too trust. I remember my teammate apologizing for that. But I mean, that type of stuff happens, right? That one's that one's uh, no one's fault. Just a, a mistouch, miscommunication by both players. Uh, again, like they're rushing the shot here for no reason. You can see a Anthony's probably upset that his teammate is slow playing this. Because he, he's trying to not give me time to get my feet set and not give me time to get boost. But Jupy is like, I don't know what Jupy's trying to do. I don't know why he's like slow playing it there. Um, And this is beautiful. So when I was talking about the cutoff earlier. So you can see on my team. Watch how my teammate carries his momentum here, right? He's literally just collecting pennies. And he's putting faith in me that I'm going to get the save. But then he's not leaving the play. He is preparing himself for the next touch, right? So I intentionally touched this like light, you can see on my screen, because I'm used to passing out of defense because I'm a 3v3 player, right? So I touch a light for him, and then all he has to do is turn and slot. And I think he missed, but he he dooms it. Beautiful. Um, and you can see from the, that's just a good punish because we got both of the orange players to go. And you see what I'm saying? Like, he goes from slow momentum to explosive in, like, a quick second. Just does a wide turn, uses his boost to turn around. And hey, I mean, missing the open end happens to everybody, so. <laughs> but he still gets the, the Doomsday Dish. We love to see that. And that is the end of that game. Um, I would like to try to get you guys an example of me playing with somebody who's very passive. But uh, we'll see. If I find one, uh, I'll cut to all right, guys, so I could not find a, a replay example of me playing with somebody who's very passive. So I think I'll make that a separate video of how to, you know, find out strategies of how to solo QTV2. So this video will primarily be focused on what type of momentum you should be carrying in 2v2, how to play the right spots, uh, stuff like that. Sound good? I don't, I also don't want my videos to be like constantly 30 minutes. It's hard for me to not overanalyze these replays because um, I'm trying to put out the you know, the best advice I can possibly give you guys. So um, I know everyone doesn't really want to watch 30 minute videos. You guys probably just tap through. So just for the sake of uh, saving some time, let's let's use this last replay to break down some of these goals. Uh, so you can tell that this is a good spot to actually play behind your teammate, right? As soon as I see Anki going for his mech play. I just want to be in a spot where I'm playing multiple scenarios, right? Because I'm too far from the play. I don't really know where the ball is going to spill. Because from my POV, it looks like Jade might have it. But Unki might also have a 50. So I'm playing in a spot where Unki can win the 50 or Jade wins the 50, right? So Jade ends up winning the 50. I punish it quick by speeding up. I play it high, which makes it very awkward for the person who's sitting on the goal line. Right? Because even, even today, like this is one of the best ways to score back in the day when when rocket league wasn't as mechanical as it was is just hitting the ball very high and you see how messy the camera angle gets for this player and this read becomes a lot harder for somebody um especially if they've not been put in that spot enough Let's see how we get scored on here oh that's just very unfortunate it probably looks very convincing to unki that uh i have that well played from Jade, though, with the reset. Oh my goodness, a little Mac tough. Sheesh, we got clipped on. Okay, let's go to the next goal. Good kickoff from us. Unki jumps for that. And I end up turning incorrectly. We're just giving freebies at that point. 
So you can watch how I carry my momentum here through this situation, right? I'm playing for the spill out, right? Either Jade's going to win this and get it up the wall, or Unke's going to win it and get it up the wall, right? He forces Jade to hit it away from themselves, and this ball is good for me. It bounces out for me because you can see Crack Pie is still turning, right? When I've already, I've already read the ball and I'm already jumped, right? So I, I know I have the beat, so I just played the beat here. Unki ends up having a, a convincing fake read here. I don't, I don't understand why Unki has to jump for that, to be fair. Uh, we already got the beat, so we might as well just put the ball in the net. Uh, but we still punish the slow momentum on the goal line, so well played from us. Good save from Unki. Let's see the next save. So you can see my playstyle in 2v2 is very much like attack dog. Like, I like to be the player to force the ball for my teammate and give my teammate a free ball. The issue with that is when I solo queue, it requires my teammate to, to follow me. Um, and you can see Unki is very patient with his uh, with his challenges. He's really somebody who likes to, to wait and buy his time. Uh, so that even with the drastic difference of how me and Unki play, uh, we still we still make a good team. Oh jeez, this is just getting really sloppy. <laughs> As every 1600 lobby is, LMAO. Nice extension played Anki, ends up whiffing, it's fine. Let's see, we get another shot on target from them. Good momentum from Crack Pie. Let's see, let's see. Looks like we get it. Okay, so we have a 2v1 opportunity. Looks like I looks like I end up making the save and scoring. Let's see what happens. Right, so I have an overcommit play. Anki ends up 15 something. Good 50 from them. Oh, the little up and in. Very smart play from me. So when I was talking about playing the net, right? This is one of these positions where the demo chaser is already way too close for comfort, right? Because I end up bumping crack by and their thought process is bump immediately, right? So they immediately are going for me. So I don't have time to swerve here. Just because I don't have the boost, I don't have time to go like get a wide angle. So I have to play the stiff angle. So I immediately jump into the net. And it's funny because when somebody sees this, they jump for you. It's almost like you fake them into thinking you're going for a squishy save. I don't know what it's, maybe it's like the pat you're, you're like triggering the pattern recognition in that person's brain. Um, and so they jump for you instead. Um, and in the meanwhile, you're turning your cart upside down so that you can get your speed going down the ramp of the back of the net. And if this shot is not good enough, right? If Jade actually ended up getting the reset here, which I don't know, I'm I'm a little confused why they didn't just go for the, the air dribble, because they definitely would have scored it if they just air dribbled it in. But it looks like they wanted the reset, um, and they just ended up giving me a free ball. And that's a goal. Very well played from us. Good uh, reverse Uno, I would call it. <laughs> it looks like they get a save here. Unki gets a very nice dust, doesn't get the reset. Um, and I just end up shooting it in the crack by instead of shooting it low. Oh, a little confusion from opposing team. Oh, very good control from us. So you can see I just get a touch around. And I am baiting Jade into, uh, into the shell here. Because it doesn't look like I have control of it. But as soon as they jump, I just get one touch over and it's free for Unki. Instead of shooting, Anki is uh, <laughs> Anki is double tapping the open net. <laughs> oh man, let's let's troll, bro. I anyway, um, I I feel like this video didn't really I didn't really do it justice of uh, really giving the a solidified answer of how you really should be playing twos. I feel like I could go way more in depth of five examples of me solo queuing with some teammates so i'll save that for the next video but i hope just you guys watching these replays kind of can implement that into your own gameplay of it's truly you should be playing where the play needs you to play um and that's something you literally have to just figure out by being put in those situations right whatever i would i would trust your gut feeling um and if you like feel like you don't trust your teammates play and you want to play behind them go for it uh, but you cannot be playing those positions as a detriment, right? I want you to be maintaining the best momentum possible in 2v2. Because especially 
if you're a player who is a little more mechanical or you think you're a little more mechanical than the rank that you're at, then use that to your advantage, right? If you can touch the ball more than your opponent, I'm not saying go go play brain dead and just touch the ball more, but use that in those situations where you can have your explosive speed and your mechanics and use that to, to beat players, to bait players in, to win the ball for your teammate. Make it make the difference in the play. But if you're somebody who likes to play create, then uh, you need to be like getting players out of the play successfully. That's another thing that uh, 1v1 teaches. Uh, but anyway, I hope this video helped you guys. Um, and if you guys have any more, I still have a few more of these tutorials to film. So, uh, but if you guys have any more recommendations, please leave them in the comments below. I've, I've very much been enjoying recording these types of videos. Uh, I love going in depth for things, so uh, yeah, make sure you guys leave a like, share, and subscribe. It helps so much. I appreciate every single one of you, um, and I will see you guys in the next one or on stream, and a happy early new year, guys. Peace.